So just received an email from a student asking to go through this question. So if you want to try this yourself, please read this question first, have a go, pause the video, and I'll go through the answer now. Okay, so the first thing you need to do for questions like this is you need to start highlighting the important information and then writing down sort of what information you know. So we're asked for the percentage of copper in a copper salt. And we're given here the mass of the copper salt. So we can write an equation straight away and sort of work backwards from the answer to what we need to know. So we can write an equation. The percentage of copper is going to be the mass, m, of the copper divided by the mass of the total salt times 100. So if we can work out the mass of the copper, divide it by the total mass, which is that, 0 0.303, times it by 100, we can get the percentage of copper. This would also work if we were working with moles. We could take the moles of copper and divide it by the total moles and times by 100. And that would also give us the same percentage. But as they've given us mass of the total salt, we're going to use mass. So let's put the information we do know into this equation and then work out what we don't know and try and work that out. So, keeping the equal sign directly below each other, write down what you do know. So we know the mass of the salt, and now we just need to find the mass of the copper. So let's write an equation for that. The only equation you know with mass in it is mass equals Mr. Moles. So let's write that down. So, mass of copper equals MR times moles. We know the MR, so let's put it in. The MR, or in this case actually AR of copper, which is read from the periodic table. Okay, so we've got the AR of copper, which is 63.5, times N. So we need to find N, that's the moles of copper. Well, if we look over here, we've got copper. This is uh, the copper ion. This is copper 2 plus. And this is the copper in this salt, copper 2 plus. Whatever the moles of copper 2 plus are, are going to be the same as the moles of copper. If you didn't follow that, let's think about the um, formula. So the copper is copper, and then it's its salt. We don't know what the salt is, but maybe it was sulfate. That makes sense. Okay, so copper sulfate. So you can see the copper would have a 2 plus charge. And however many moles you have of the copper 2 plus would be the same as the moles of the copper. So we don't know this is copper sulfate. Let's remove that. Don't want to confuse things. But So what we've got to do is work out the moles of the copper 2 plus. So we can see, and we can read what happens in, happens in the equation the question. So it says that the copper salt was dissolved in water... Okay, so it's dissolved, it's going to form into its ions, so hence the copper 2 plus, and added to an excess of potassium iodide solution. So you think, where's the potassium iodide? Well, the potassium iodide is, contains the iodide ions, which are there. Liberating iodine according to the following equation. So liberating means uh, making, so you can see that iodine is made over here. So the I, copper 2 plus reacts with the iodide and makes iodine. So if we could work out the moles of any one of these things in the equation, we could use them in molar ratios to work out the moles of the thing that we want, which is this. But we haven't been given enough information for any of these things in this equation. Uh, the question then goes on to say that the iodine, highlighted in green, liberated, so made, remember liberated means made, required 2.4 cm cubed or 0.1 mol per dm cubed solution of sodium thiosulfate. So sodium thiosulfate is, let's highlight that in blue, so sodium thiosulfate is this one here. It's a thiosulfate ion. So it's reacting with the iodine, and it's telling us that how much required. So they did a titrate. They must have done a titration, and this was the titrate here, 24.5, and that's the concentration. So if we know the concentration and we know the volume of the thiosulfate ion, we can use that to work out the moles of the thiosulfate ion. If we know the moles of the thiosulfate ion, we can use those moles and molar ratios to work out the moles of iodine. If we know the moles of iodine, we have the moles of iodine, so we can use those moles to work out the moles of the copper 2 plus. And then we can put it back into our equation, work out the mass, put it back into this equation, and work out the percentage of copper. So let's do that slowly. So step one, we want to work out the moles of the thiosulfate ion that reacted with the iodine. So here's an equation for moles, concentration times volume. Let's put the numbers in and work out the moles. 
So we do concentration, that's 0 0.1 there, times the volume. And the volume's been given in cm cubed, so we convert it to dm cubed, because this equation everything has to be in dm cubed, so we divide by 1,000. Let's throw it into the calculator. So that equals 0 0.00245 moles. Uh, probably the best idea really to write this in standard form. Uh, I'm going to leave it like this, but it's better to write in standard form because it's very common for students to uh, forget about zeros and lose out zeros. And if you write it in standard form, so 2.45 times 10 to the minus 3, you won't make that mistake. Okay, so we've got the moles of the fire sulfate, so we can use that to work out the moles of the iodine, because we can see the ratio of 2 to 1. So we can see that the moles of I2 equals the moles of S2O3 divided by 2. Technically you divide by 2 times by 1, but times in by 1 is not important, so it's just the moles of that equals the moles of that divided by 2. So, if we divide this number by 2, we get 0 0.001225 moles of iodine. So that's the moles of iodine. That's the moles of iodine that was there, so that must have been the moles that was created. So when you're going between equations, you don't use ratios, because if that's the moles of iodine that was there, that is the moles of iodine that was created. So this is the moles, 0 0.01225, of iodine that was created. And then we can use molar ratios to work out how many moles of copper must have been used up. So the moles of copper, 2 plus, equals the moles of I2 times 2, because divide by 1 times by 2. So looking down here, we can see that equals our moles of I2 times 2 equals 0 0.0245, oh, for the units, mole. Okay, so we can now, now we've got the moles of copper, we can take it back into this original equation here, so let's add it into there. So it's times 0 0.00245 times the MR will give us the mass of copper. Okay, so throwing that to the calculator gives me 0 0.1556 to four decimal places. So it was actually 0 0.155575, but um, AQA generally like us to sort of keep to four sig figs for our working um, and then three for our final answer. So that's why I've done that. Okay, let's take this mass and put it back into this equation here. Okay, there we go, there's the mass, let's divide it and let's work out our answer. Okay, and it comes out as 0.510%, so our answer must be B.